and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, we got another segment, another story. Daniel, what is going on? Yeah, so we have a kind of similar along the same lines. This is we're going to have two videos we're going to be playing, but this kind of gets into this bigger uh, feature of uh, what I was just saying, that what is the most important thing of being a politician? It's helping your constituents. I'm just kidding. It's getting reelected, of course. Okay. And remember how everyone was like, Biden good, Biden very good, Biden infinitely better than Trump, Trump very bad. I remember this. It's all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, now we're getting to a point where the re-election happens, and that's when everyone goes, okay, time to re-talk our story to be more populist, to get votes, because we're about to get slammed hard in the midterms. And, um, well, I thought we, again, so we have two interesting videos on Fox, and I believe that we have Numiki Konst is, is arguing on behalf of the Democrats. What's she doing on Fox News? Okay, I guess that... that I didn't even think of that. Yeah, everyone, why are we not calling out everyone? We should be trying to cancel Nomiki <laughs> on Twitter because she went on Fox News. Isn't that the rules that have been set up for everyone else that the Democrats don't like that are Democrats? Yeah, what's but, she doing? What's but, she doing? And so here she is. As the, you know, I know, I know why Fox brings her on. By the way, I, my guess. Oh, I oh, think really? I, I, I guessing. I, and I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna explain it once I do. If you agree with me. Type one. If you think that maybe I'm not getting the full thing or you don't agree with it, anything other than yes, hit two. All right, democracy. Okay. They get her on because she's a smaller contributor, so she really actually gets a boost out of going on Fox News. So it's really good for her internally to go on Fox News for numbers, which ironically is why a lot of other people also go on Fox News. Right. Other reason is she always is so ideological in her talking points that Fox News loves her because she kind of like, you know, wind up monkey says the thing that's predictable. <laughs> And so she's always going to like, she's never going to have a really great counter to anything they say from okay. the ears of a Fox News or maybe from from an ears of an NBC viewer. Sure. OK, but she's on Fox News, not NBC. So when she goes on Fox News, she gives the NBC talking points and Fox already has worked, has already decoded. The Enigma machine has cracked that code and uh, they're able to just laugh at her effectively every because every time I notice she goes on on Fox News, that's what happens. They have her on. They say a thing. She says a thing, but then ties to something else that's already a pre-written talking point in Fox viewers no, uh, uh, heads to counter because it's an NBC talking point. Then they kind of dismiss her and they go and then they then they let her go. That's always how like a Nomiki Fox interview seems to work in my at least in my recollection. And so exactly, the one. Yeah, she's predictable as hell. That's why they have her on, because they know she's not going to say anything useful. Um, then they're going to be able to counter her, and their audience is already predisposed to be countered, or to counter what she's saying, because she's copying. She's not like, she. Nomiki, and maybe, maybe say it another way. Nomiki goes up there and goes, okay, let me tell you the, the NBC talking points I already heard. Anyway, let's hear the video. And just watch it. You'll see it. Now, Mickey, I'm going to come to you first and, and just get your initial thoughts on why you think Democrats in those particularly important uh, categories for voters are leaning back away from your party. Listen, I mean, this is a very tough economy, but, you know, when you look into those numbers in the polls and you dig in a little bit more, you see that a quarter of Americans see? are blaming the pandemic. Another quarter of Americans are pl- blaming corporate price gouging, like the oil companies who are jacking up gas prices right now for their benefit, and Congress is now investigating. It is historic that, as we all know, in the midterms, whatever president it is, their party is not doing as well. But if you even see those numbers... It's a statistical tie. So, uh, you know, it's wonky and people don't want to, you know, polls are polls and they can influence how people feel. One second. You know who uses the word wonky? NBC. And specifically that guy who has that weird balding, the the, the pollster guy. Oh, yeah. That everyone likes that isn't that accurate. Yeah. He just got Obama right and that was it. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What's, oh, yeah, the, the dude, yeah, who said he, uh, that Obama would get elected, and since then he got everything wrong. Ah, yeah. you know, audience, audience, we're having a case of dementia. That's literally, like, that's like NBC uses the word wonky. Like, I don't know any other network that does. Anyway. All right. 
feel about things. And obviously, uh, you know, if you really do want to look at the polls, Donald Trump right now is doing his best ever. Oh boy, and it's exactly where Joe Biden Silver. is right now. Nate Silver, thank you. Okay, but thank we you, Dana. Donald Trump. We have one have president at a time, a and his name is Joe Biden. And on at least half of what you mentioned, <laughs> <doesn't>. water, <laughs> she literally, she uses standard talking points. They're used to them already yeah. because they're not new. And that's literally their thing is countering whatever NBC says. So she uses them. They already know how to respond without even thinking, and she looks like a fool. That's why they have her on. Keep going. Remember, he said he was going to come in and fix it. What was he going to do? Matt, he was going to shut it down, shut down the virus. That has not happened. But, Namiki, I, I appreciate your, your love of history. Matt? <laughs> <laughs> See, they don't even have to think when she's on. The number one issue is the economy and inflation. And 63% of respondents disapprove of how Biden has handled that. That's not just a red flag. That's a flashing red warning signal. Uh, but also, this poll is a story for other reasons. Uh, as you saw the generic ballot there, Republicans lead by two points. That's the first time NBC has had a lead for Republicans on that question since September of 2014. Ooh. And right uh, later that year, Republicans elected the largest uh, House ma majority since the 1920s. That's historic. And if you look, I think Afghanistan proved to be Biden's Katrina moment or undermined his uh, argument of competence. Let's, let's, let's pause it here. And it Can I just add in? There's been a lot of moments with the Biden Harris administration crap the bed. But the reason that he's picking, he's there, he's a his person as well. He's picking that because they don't like the Republicans don't like military withdrawals. Yeah, no, don't. And they so don't. for them, they're talking, but it's, it's like he's what he's really saying. Let me just convert that into real speak. Mm -hmm. The military industrial complex was really upset that they lost money in Afghanistan. And let's be very clear here. There's a big difference between Republican voters and Republican politicians yes. and think tanks. Yes. So let's be clear on this. Yes. Republican think tanks and Republican politicians and leadership don't like the withdrawal. Yeah. Republican voters do. Like, hey, let's let's get yeah. out. Yeah. You know, and anyway, yeah. so uh, we want we But that's why they're phrasing it. Yeah, as, that they're not even yeah. saying the Afghan withdrawal. It's yeah. it's the devastating. It's like it's the thing that they lost money on. That's why he's bringing it up. Like, so if Nomiki was smart enough and not predictable, mm -hmm. she would, that's what I would hit him back on. It's like, you talked about Afghanistan with drill. You know, that's just because military industrial complex was not happy. They, they lost profits, even though we saved lives. Exactly. Uh, one other thing here too, a little off topic, where pilgrim, cause I see the chat. That ma uh, this man's head's as smooth as like an egg. There we go. <laughs> just, 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 By the way, I, when, when you're watching the video, just do this. There you go. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, cool. All right. Let's, All right, keep let's play the rest. Tim, and it hasn't gotten better for him since. All right, let's talk money. Biden's approval on the economy also at an all-time low, with just 33% of people approving of its handling uh, by Biden. 38% blame the president for rising inflation, which hit 7.9% in February. I I'll come in reverse order, Matt. No, again, that's a huge, huge issue. And as you mentioned before, his numbers among Latinos and African Americans is also troublesome. Look, Republicans have make, been making really quiet gains, uh, steady gains, though, over the last couple of years. Democrats have taken them for granted. They just they assume that all they care about is either immigration <laughs> no, or free I can't stuff. Not when like all an egg. they really care about is all <laughs> what the rest of us care about, which is the economy, making sure their streets are safer and their houses are safer and their kids get a quality education. It's not rocket science. I should make my own person how they look. Them. That's not right. That's not no, Mickey. Well, I got to hand it to you, Matt. Your jujitsu, your communications jujitsu is amazing. Hold on, pause it. In See, he knows his judo well. <laughs> Let's play it. 14 is the last time Republicans did better. Again, that was a midterm year. This is historic. That is how it works. Everybody knows that. But you do a great job at that. Also, I mean, let's okay, see. Okay, so right there. Like, so she takes her time. He said a lot of things. And she's like, yeah, Democrats, everyone always loses in the midterm. Don't you know that? It's like, okay, then you're every, you know what every Fox News viewer uh, thinks when they, when they see that? Oh, she just conceded that point. Yeah. Okay. Good job. No, Mickey. That's why you're on Fox. Big brain mentality. Let's play to rest. We're losing support among minorities. It's actually quite small. And you are gaining a very, very, very tiny, almost not even relevant number of minority support. You know, let's go back to your numbers, which is important because the economy is in this situation because the corporations, the multinational corporations, which you, fund you, the lobbies, you do which realize fund realize your that the Congress price of members, gas was up by like a buck 92 before. Okay, pause it just for a second.
See, this is, she had a moment. She almost had something. She was going on court for profits and they immediately interrupted her. Yeah. Yeah. And now what's she going to do? She's going to go, I won't talk about that anymore. Let me pivot over here. They put up a roadblock. Okay. I'll drive around. I'll turn around. Play the rest. Told Russia we wouldn't buy any more oil and the numbers started to really yes. burst. I'm not blaming Putin. I, I, okay, but I what about the Putin cost of bread? Lot, what I will that doesn't have anything to do with the oil companies yeah. or the big Corporate corporations. It has to do with CEOs price gouging. They're price gouging everywhere to an effect that Congress is now going to investigate it. If wow. the Republican Party is blind right. to this because they take donations, my, my you favorite no part problem. of your Inflation argument, Amiki, was arguing how many blacks, Latinos, independents, and women don't like you. <laughs> it's like that was the argument. It's <laughs> but look at that. I want to point this out though. Like Fox News isn't. It's. It doesn't take a genius to crack Fox News. No, it doesn't. You literally go down that route. That's the only time they interrupted her when she was starting to do that. But she wasn't doing it well because she'd already lost the confidence of the audience in the entire first half of the interview. Mm -hmm. So by the time she got to a point where she was making a decentish point that wasn't delivered well or worded in a way that I would have worded to talk to regular people. Um, it didn't matter. And then they were just able to talk over her when she did it. And you know what I would have done if, you know, if you, if I, I don't know, like, I don't know if I ever get on Fox news. If I mean, if I'm given the opportunity, I likely would because it's an opportunity to speak to a lot of people. Yeah. I, would, well, anyway, yeah, I, I, I jump on that opportunity yeah. too. I, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. And I would, you know, say if someone's interrupting, I would just say, yeah, I don't think of something, but, um, I'm talking here. That's yeah, I, I don't know. I'm talking here. I'm not done yet. I, I mean, if I'm on Third Fox News, I definitely think ahead about how I would deal with that. Yeah. But um, I mean, I've always thought about doing. I'd always want to have like a, like a, like a, like a sandwich sign, you know, like the little like a little popsicle stick. Yeah. Like this is a professional interview or something like that. I don't know. Something. But the point is, <laughs> Nomiki walks into this very predictable way of speaking in a very predictable way that's let out in a predictable way that Fox News is able to counter. And the second that she sort of even gets close to around that, she really can't, she doesn't do anything. She She's on Fox News because Fox News knows that she will make the Democratic Party look weak from the point of view of their viewership. And that's why she's on. Yeah. Well, there we go. But I think we got another video to play. Uh, again, huge shout out again to Case Study QB. He's doing a lot of great work. Be sure to support him on Twitter and check out his YouTube page and Twitter account as well. I mean, YouTube page and Odyssey page as well. Uh, Twitter is censoring him, and it's kind of stupid. So there we go. Let's play it. And the criticism of this budget coming from the right and the left. Senator Bernie Sanders says this. At a time when we are already spending on the military more than the next 11 countries, we do not need a massive increase in defense spending. But this budget could increase spending on social programs, too. It actually leaves a hole to be filled later for the cost of the social spending package. All right, pause it right there. The See, there's just Fox News being predictable. Someone brings up military spending and then they just cut over to social spending, which they've already embedded in their audience as black and Hispanic people taking money while not doing anything. Play the rest. The young says that that is because that package is still being negotiated and they didn't have a cost to put into the budget. So the budget also assumes, get this, Neil, a, an inflation rate of 4.7 percent and then 2.3 percent for years after that. The assumption it's now, as you know, well more than that. Uh, so that could be an issue. But again, Congress is the one that's going to decide on any of the money that is spent. Back to you. And the criticism of this right, budget coming from the right so, repeating itself again. So, there so all of this comes together to this big point I want to make. The Democrats are starting to worry that Biden's not going to carry them into the midterms at really at all. In fact, it's going to likely be a bit of a slaughter for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And what's what's going to happen when this happens is we we're already seeing Bernie Sanders. Oh, it's my good friend, Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders right now as midterms are getting near. I'm really not happy about the cost of this defense bill that Joe Biden is putting together. Oh what you're going to see and what we've already started seeing is all the Democrats are going to start separating away from Biden during the midterms and say, I'm not like that. I've been trying to reform this party and no one's been listening to me. That's why you need to send me back for another uh, term in office so I can continue the fight that I haven't been, I mean, I have been fighting very hard to accomplish uh, while I do insider trading. I've been, while I've been fighting insider trading and that's because they're trying to win their reelection campaign and they know Biden's going to be toxic. So 
A lot of people are going to be pushing away from Biden. At the same time, they're going to be coalescing around him because he's the party head and blah, 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 the formalities. Um, but what we're going to see uh, more and more uh, is in this uh, midterm happens is everyone's going to go, I'm very unhappy with the way the Democratic Party is moving. That's why you should reelect me. Well, I'm not going to vote Democrat. I'm sure as hell I'm not going to vote Republican. I'll support independents and I'm going to support ballot initiatives. But Bernie, you know, glad that you're talking about it. I'm seeing you post a lot of feel good tweets. I've seen Rokana do that too, but these are words. What are you going to do about it? All that compromise you did in 2020, what a cuck. I swear, I swear. Like, I know we said it, it's not going to happen, right? But if he does throw his hand in the ring for 2024, if Bernie decides to run for a third time, I'm going to be really freaking pissed. I'm going to be very, very upset. Yeah, I'm going to be like, well, what's the tic-tac-toe three in a row? You're, you're the biggest cuck. And, and I, okay, I didn't come up with some rhyme after that, so I screwed up. So there we go. I'm not much of a poet or a rhymer. There, there goes my, there goes my uh, hopes for being a, a musician and a rapper. So there we go. Yeah, the, the guys <laughs> definitely his his chances were alive and well until this they, moment. Until, until this freaking Every, moment, everyone we gonna, saw it happen. Everyone's gonna look back and be like, "Wow, he was really pro he was a he really was, promising rapper." And then yeah, promising like, rapper. And then on uh, March 29th <laughs> at about 4:40 p.m. Central Standard Time. Central Standard Time. Central right Standard. around then, within there five minutes go. of that. Uh, that 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 ended. That ended right yeah. there. Yeah, real time. You saw it. Sorry, I let you all down. This is the moment Kit's rapping career died. That's the end. That's the end of it. Well, look, well, I can still be the host of Hard Lens Media. So there we go. There we go. Everyone, can we get a moment of silence for Kit's rapping career? There we go. Okay, now we're done. Moment of silence passed. So uh, to hell with the Democratic Party. Shout out again to Case Study QB, doing some fantastic work.